bonjour à tous. Um, apologies for switching into English. The main question of this uh, conference is how can we, heritage and museum professionals, how can we make the most of the public's passion for, cultural, for the cultural heritage? In my view, this question automatically and inevitably gives rise to a whole new set of questions, such as what do we mean by the public? How do we define it and how well do we know it? Should we take for granted the public's passion, enthusiasm, commitment, or even desire to engage with heritage in the first place? So, um, the good news is that according to a recent Eurobarometer survey on the attitude of Europeans towards their cultural heritage, the large majority of respondents, over 80%, think that cultural heritage is important for them personally, for the local community, and even for the European Union. However, when asked if they have visited at least one site monument or a museum in the last 12 months, only 50% of the respondents reply positively. So, what about the remaining 50%? Shouldn't we be interested to engage that part of the public too? After all, we do acknowledge that cultural participation is a human right. What can we do to redress this imbalance and how do we shape our relationship with different parts of the public? This is where audience development fits in. So, um, we in the museum world over the last few decades, we have gradually shifted our attention from objects to audiences. Um, museums are evolving to become more audience-centered. Uh, they are engaging more and more with audience development and um, developing ongoing relationships with different types of audiences is increasingly felt as crucial to museums in order for them to survive and be sustainable. But what do we mean by audience development? Well, this concept started out in the 80s and 90s as something that is purely associated with marketing and communication. It has, however, um, evolved to incorporate also concepts of access, accessibility, engagement, and even social inclusion. So, according to um, a definition provided by the European Commission, audience development is a strategic, dynamic, and interactive process of making the arts and heritage, I would add, widely accessible. And basically, the essence of audience development is captured in three words, widening, deepening, diversifying. Widening means simply increasing the audience of the same kind as the current visitors, as the one who are attending today. Deepening relationships refer also to the current audiences, but it is qualitative. It means offering to this audience a, an enriched, enhanced experience in order to foster loyalty and return visits. Diversifying means reaching out to those who do not normally visit, the traditional non-attenders. And according to a recent EU study, there are three categories of audiences, let's say, but these are really flexible and can be overlapping. But in general, we have uh, audiences by habit, the ones who have access to culture, the ones who see themselves as regular visitors and they perceive themselves as um, 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 naturally, uh, they perceive themselves as a cultural audience. We have audiences by choice, which describes people who do not see themselves as regular visitors, and uh, they're not used to attend, or they rarely attend cultural activities. And audiences by surprise is meant to describe people who do not participate because they experience barriers to access, or they feel indifferent or even hostile towards the arts and heritage. They are the hard to reach audiences. So cultural organizations, including museums, may choose to either work with one um, audience type, one of these categories, or two or three of them, but it all depends, it is a matter of choice, which very much um, um, is uh, determined by and reflected in the mission statement of each organization. So let's see how this works in practice.
This is the Bath Museum partnership. I start with um, 13 museums in the city of Bath in the UK, which decided to join forces in order to coordinate their offer to visitors and promote the museum sector as one voice. Since 2013, when this uh, partnership umbrella started, they have undertaken collaborative work. Um, they have jointly undertaken market research to identify, to understand the profile of the cultural visitors of Bath. They have organized joint campaigns, um, joint museum itineraries, and um, uh, many other marketing activities in order to create a coherent identity for the museum sector in Bath. Um, they were targeting the audiences by habit, the ones who um, have already an appetite for culture, and they were aiming to expand their audience base and not necessarily to go into depth in their relationship with them. And they did so successfully. They managed to increase the average number of museum visits in Bath by 63%, and uh, working in collaboration and not in competition with each other, required a shift in mindset uh, among the staff, but it really paid off since um, it meant a larger mar market for the museum sector as a whole, and in their words, a bigger cake for the museums to share. Now, um, this is the Riverside Museum in Glasgow. It's um, the new museum, the, the new home of the city's Museum of Transport since 2011, and what's interesting is that the new museum grew out of the conscious intention to involve the local community to the entire planning. So the museum first identified its five key audiences, families, schools, teenagers, sensory impaired, and children under five, and in then went on to establish five advisory panels respectively. So panel members were members of the local community representing the five key target audiences. These panels were consulted about everything, from content development to design to interpretation. They served as a means to test ideas for exhibits prior to their development. So they actually um, served as a, um, an, for audience research in order the museum to understand what works and what doesn't. And this model proved to be such a success, such a, a, a very uh, important tool for audience development that was then established as a permanent structure for all Glasgow museums. Museum under Strom, or Museum on the River, or MAS, is the new museum of ethnography and applied arts in the old port of Antwerp in Belgium. And, um, I have here, um, uh, well, uh, Mass in Young Hands is a program that was um, uh, established a few years ago, and it, uh, the aim of this project, this program, is to attract young people from 16 to 26 who do not usually visit museums, and um, how do they do it? They have established an advisory board which is recruited every year through an open call uh, it's an advisory board um, uh, made up of uh, young people, students, about 15, 20 students, who are integrated into the museum structure, and they make proposals, and they, uh, have a, uh, they contribute on the exhibition design and the development of specific events and activities in order to make the museum more um, youth-friendly. This is the Van Abbe Museum in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. Um, is a, it is a museum of modern and contemporary art which has proclaimed itself as a visitor-focused museum and has indeed made radical efforts in the last five years to open up to as much a diverse audience as possible. According to the museum's mission statement, um, the museum um, provides unlimited access to anyone who is curious outside or inside the museum walls. So, um, have here the, the special guests program, which is um, a program of customized guided tours developed in cooperation and for um, people, disabled people with all kinds of disabilities, blind, deaf, 
uh, visit those with Alzheimer's and their caretakers, um, uh, visit those um, with aphasia, all kinds of mental um, health uh, problems. So the museum calls itself the Unlimited Fun Abbe, and they truly mean what they say. They even have a program where the museum visit is possible via a robot, a robot. For people confined to bed, they can uh, guide themselves through the museum from the laptop from home. So um, these are very um, uh, indicative uh, case studies um, which were presented to you in order to prove that different types of audiences and different goals require call for different strategies, different solutions. But it should be stressed that the underpinning philosophy of any audience development strategy is the commitment to an audience-centered approach, is putting audiences at the heart of the organization. It's uh, being fully and consciously audience-centered. And what does it mean to be audience-centered? It means for an institution to be vision-led. It means that uh, you have a strong uh, director, a director who is strong, able, and willing to trigger change within the institution, especially if there's internal resistance. It is crucial for the director to think that the audience is as important as collections. It means to be mission-driven. Commitment to audiences should be at the core of the organization and reflected in its mission statement. Organization-wide, it should be, audience development should be understood as the responsibility of the whole institution and not just one department. And it should be embedded in the organizational culture of the institution. Research informed, of course, the foundation of every um, audience development strategy is audience research, knowing our, our audiences and um, analysis. So uh, the results of this um, research should be disseminated within the whole museum and be made available to the whole staff. Interactive engagement, we're talking about a two-way dialogue with the audience. So um, uh, activities like consultation, crowdsourcing, co-creation, or any approach where the audience is asked to be part of the process um, uh, is very fundamental. Measuring impact. The museum should be outcome-oriented, uh, not just by counting visitors, counting uh, numbers, but also by um, trying to measure the, the impact um, that uh, the difference that it makes to the life of, of the local community in terms of well-being, quality of life. Um, partnership and collaboration um, in order to uh, engage in an audience development uh, project, you have to have the ability to develop networks, partnerships and collaborations with other museums, other sectors, local groups, the media, uh, in general, many other stakeholders. And finally, long term. It is impossible to do it short term and it's not an ad hoc project because it is essentially about changing beliefs. It is about changing your mindset and you cannot change your set of beliefs in a short period of time. So, um, this is our website where you can find more information, more news articles and reports about this uh, subject if you're interested. And um, I'm gonna stop here and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.